Hi everyone. In this video, I'll go through how to utilize Git within Google Colab and how to push changes to a GitHub repo. Let's start with defining what Git is. Git is an open source distributed version control system designed to handle a variety of projects with speed and efficiency. Version control is the practice of tracking and managing changes to software code. If you're relatively new to Git and GitHub, you may still not know the difference between the two. There's this great article from Dev Mountain that does a good job summarizing this. Git is a version control system that lets you manage and keep track of your source code history, while GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service that lets you manage Git repositories. If you have open source projects that use Git, then GitHub is designed to help you better manage them. So I always think of this as you can control things with Git, make changes, and then you can mostly use GitHub for storing your repositories. And let's go through my own repository here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a file to this repository here, the leak code hacker rank solutions and more repo. What I have in this repo are a bunch of Jupyter notebooks that have solutions to leak code problems. And I'm going to add a file here to the solutions folder. And this is the file I'll add. We can see that it's a Google Colab notebook that solves a leak code problem. The first thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to call Git and we'll have to log in to our GitHub account, or in this case, my GitHub account. The way that we do this is we initiate a Git command with an exclamation point. And what I did here is I did Git config dash dash global, and then I put in my username, my email, and my password, which are different than this. Once I run that, I next have to save these into string forms. And the one thing I have to change is this token here. And the way that you can generate a token is if you're in your own GitHub account, you go to settings, you go down to developer settings, then you go to personal access tokens, and that's where you can generate a new token. And you can name the token whatever you want. Doesn't really matter. You can set the expiration date for when the token expires. Seven days, 90 days, custom or no expiration. And then you can give how much access the token has for the repos. I already created mine, but if you're doing this for the first time, you'll have to check through these. And if you're unsure, you can always check through all of them. Just be careful because if you check everything, then this gives a lot of power. And if somebody gets your token, they have a lot of access to your GitHub account. Okay, going back, we have our token, our username, and our repo. What I want to do now is I want to create a clone of my repo or repository. If I go back, this is what I want to clone, which is going to give me a copy. And I'll code this out now. Okay, what this is going to do is it's going to use my token and it has my username as well as the name of the repo. And it's going to create a copy of the repo in our content folder here in Google Colab. Let's run this. And if I refresh the folder, we can see that we now have a copy. And we can compare this to the GitHub file. Paradoxes, we have a paradox folder here, hacker rank solutions, so on and so forth. So we were able to successfully clone this into our content folder. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call a magic command here, CD, which stands for change directory. And I'm going to go into the repo folder. 
Now I'm in our cloned repo folder. What I'll do next is I'll list out all the items in there just to double check. And then I am going to take our file here and I downloaded it locally. I'm going to drag and drop the file into our content folder. And what I could do is I could use bash to move this folder to our cloned hacker rank solutions. The MV function stands for move. And I am going to get the path of this. And I'm also going to get the path to our solutions folder. If I hit the refresh, we were able to move it into our folder. Next, I'm going to call git status. And what this does is it gives the current state of our copy. There are untracked files, which is the file that we moved here. And what that means is that we've created a, we've made an edit to the working repo, but we have not yet added it to the tracking index. What we need to do next is we need to call git again, add, and what I'll do just to be safe is I'll do dash dash all. And what it does, what this does is it updates the index using the current content found in our working repo here. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a commit to this repo and it's going to commit all the changes to our track files. I'll also add a message here. And what this is, it's just good practice when you start using version control and you work with files with many other people is they need to know why files were added or why they were deleted. And this dash M leaves a message for that. Let's run this. And we were successfully able to cr commit this. Next, we're going to run git remote and what this does is it displays the URLs of all the remote repos. Finally, what I need to do is I need to push these changes. We still have our GitHub here. And if I go into solutions, we still don't have the check if two strings notebook here. I go back. I'm going to go and hit git push origin and master. And what this does is it's going to push the changes I made to the remote repository and it's going to make the edits here in GitHub. Let's run this and it should be good. Let's check here. And we were able to successfully add the notebook into our GitHub repo online. And we can see that we have our message here added a file to the leak code folder. I hope that this was useful. I plan to make more Git, GitHub, and Google Colab videos going into the future. There are plenty of great sources if you want to do this within an IDE that's not Google Colab. And there's this great video from this channel called The Coding Train that breaks this down and is far more detailed than I was. I found it very helpful when I started it out. And then we have a bunch of websites that give you Git commands that you can learn, as well, well as the Git documentation, documentation site, which I always recommend getting familiar with documentation sites, and the article from Dev Mountain. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that this was helpful, and happy coding.